So talking to Lana Olson of the Traveling Volunteer, and you just had your one year anniversary. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, and we... you had, yeah, that was great. And you had a great one year um, anniversary party live on Facebook. That was really exciting. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and maybe about what the guests were talking about who were on the show? Sure. Um, thank you so much. And I first want to thank you for allowing me to speak on that. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll recap that day. It was August the 7th. Um, that was the first anniversary or first birthday of the Traveling Volunteer and essentially had three Facebook Live events. Um, the first one, I included a guest all the way from Congo, Shakila. She's a community member there. So she spoke a little bit about her perspective of volunteers coming in and, and how that's impacted her. Then um, I spoke a little bit about uh, the organization Hives for Haiti. They, um, they do a lot of great work right now. They um, come, come to us from Vancouver Island. Well, it's not Vancouver Island. It's Salt Spring Island. So they had very remote access to Internet. So oh, they weren't okay. able to come live, but they gave a little bit of feedback. More information is actually about their organization is on the website, but on the Facebook page as well. Okay. And then for the second event, um, I spoke a bit about uh, stuff that happened in the last year and what we're going to do to go forward. <clears throat> and then um, the third hour uh, was yourself. You were featured first. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we had a few technical difficulties, yes. but I think, I think we got there in the end with something about volunteering for plastic pollution cleanups in Japan. Exactly. And uh, disaster volunteering. We had some good questions too, right? Like oh, absolutely. People, yeah, it, it was yeah. really good. It was really quite quite a popular um, discussion, and uh, so I think you know we're going to try the the live event sometime again. Um, but this is great through Skype. And then the, the second batch of guests, there were two of them. They represent um, not just tourists, the Orange County chapter here in the United States. And they talked about how you can be a soft volunteer, I call it that, to take suitcases of medical supplies, um, essentially, if you're going to go visit a country that needs them. So mm -hmm. that's what and that was not that I that was really interesting to me. And um, it was, of course, important to note that it's not medications that they're taking, but it's it's more medical supplies like bandages and uh, even antiseptic maybe is the strongest kind of medicine that they would take, but that even that basic level of medical hygiene, I guess you could t call it, is lacking so much in in developing countries. That exactly that that's really needed. So that was taking from the states to um, developing or any country in need, right? Basically. Yeah, pretty much. I, they do have some, uh, the main chapter or the main um, start of the organization uh, began quite a, well, a few decades ago in Toronto, um, Ontario, Canada. And they have some chapters throughout the world. Not as many, but they're starting, I think, a couple in Europe and uh, just one in the United States. They have partnered now with another organization, too. So we're going to have some developments uh, and updates on that on the Facebook page and website as well. Yeah, so, that's wonderful. Yeah. Very exciting. Very needed and um, something quite different from the typical volunteer activity, I think. But something so simple that people could do. Exactly. And it, it does, I think, in speaking to your topic, it... Uh, when there's the medical supplies that are still very good, but they're updated in some of the Western countries. Uh, avoiding the landfill is one great benefit of not having these supplies go there if they don't yeah. have another destination, another purpose, where other countries, they could use these. And so it's kind of a twofold uh, benefit is avoiding that landfill, but yeah. most importantly, to get to the hands of, of some people that need it in other countries. Yeah. And actually, it is it is connected to the cleanup activities as well, beach and river, because we do find medical supplies on the beaches, which is sad. You do find syringes and stuff um, sometimes, not often, even in Japan. So if there is more, I mean, there's obviously a great need. People should be reusing and disposing properly. But also, there's just a lack, 
a general lack of supplies in places that really need it, right? Yeah. So they, so it's it is it's a really great um, organization, great nonprofit that uh, is filling a need. And uh, as we all know, it, it can be costly to even send a parcel overseas. And yeah. if you can actually use a <clears throat> uh, a carrier that we call it an in- intermediary yeah. that's already going to go on vacation somewhere, uh, it takes yeah. about uh, you know your time to get it through customs. They already have that already done for you. And about yeah. 30 minutes of your time to make sure it gets to the clinic and then you're on your way for your vacation. Yeah. And a lot of people might worry about like baggage allowances, but actually it's usually 20 kilograms per bag and up to two bags. So it is kind of a generous, if you're traveling internationally, usually you have more than enough baggage allowance, unless you're going back with loads of presents, visiting family or something. So I think for the general traveler that can work really well, I think. Yes, and especially the ones that do have uh, perks with certain airlines, uh, you may already have a free bag allowance, and you may not even be using it if you're just going to be going with a backpack or something. So uh, some have just given those up um, just to donate them, and some airlines have actually partnered and you know give a discount because they're a nonprofit. So there's there's a lot of ways to have it uh, cheaper in a pack. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. And, uh, you know, when disasters happen, we don't know when disasters will happen. They just happened. Uh, they just had the five year anniversary of the the big um, landslides and rain flooding disasters in Hiroshima. They just had big ceremonies and stuff. So it's been five years since the most severe ones happened. Mm-hmm. Um And this, you know, with global warming and disasters becoming more and more frequent, things like that, where people are sending even basic supplies to an area that really needs it after a disaster, when everything's wiped out, that could be really an advantage, you know, for the really helping the local people in the local area. Absolutely, especially if you are a humanitarian uh, relief worker and you are going anyway and you're able to hook into maybe this type of organization, um, possibly they can do it through Red Cross in that anyway. I don't know those. Yeah. I don't know much about that. But definitely, you know, uh, again, getting it out of the landfill is one great perk, but definitely get use for these uh, really good supplies that are hygienic and everything. They just need another home, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. Do you want to talk a little bit about the the Haiti project that you mentioned? To like explain that just a little bit? Sure. Uh, Hives for Haiti um, was started by David uh, McDonald and other partners who uh, went to Haiti and um, <clears throat> a few years ago and determined that they wanted to uh, give more than what they saw that was going on. And they, they thought, you know, we've got some beekeeping skills that we could possibly use in the area to help okay, with so economic driving. Hives. 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 Yes. H-I-V-E. Okay. Yes. Like a hive, like a beehive. I got so, it. Okay. Uh, hives for Haiti. And um, in it, their story is actually on the travelingvolunteer.com website. And, um, and more information, a lot of updates on the um, Facebook page for for people who want to find out more. But the latest thing that they've done is they really wanted to help target the women um, in the area. And Mm -hmm. so locals, local leaders, they were uh, given a task to find uh, women to be trained as beekeepers. And so they had their first all women's class just recently being trained. In that whole area of beekeeping, and I really don't know much about beekeeping. No, uh, they I, do, yeah. Uh, but it's That's it's awesome. really neat to see that they they were focusing on the women um, to get involved um, in yeah. in something like that. You know. Yeah. Last month, I had a chance to go out and go to a bee farm and like shadow a beekeeper for the morning, and I've I've got that video up and I've got it on the post on my website. Um, And then it it made me realize how important beekeeping is for Mm. food security and sustainability. And then this farm, the bee farm, was right next to an organic vegetable farm. So they're really helping each other. And, uh, you know, the bees come over and pollinate the, the vegetables and make them grow better. But 
But also when I visited the organic farm, I realized the bees, because of all the pollen coming from different areas, even different trees in the forest, that that affects what happens to the vegetables. The vegetables become more diverse and in their diversity become stronger. So there was so, you know, I went, it was so great during those two interviews because I learned so much from both sides, the beekeeper and the vegetable farmer. And I think these are things that most people just don't know about how important bees are for our ecosystem and for our health and Mm -hmm. safety and lives, right? Yeah, absolutely. Getting hives um, to Haiti and getting women to become beekeepers you know so then you've got women empowerment issues as well and the women are usually the caregivers for the children so then you have healthier families there's so many wonderful knock-on effects of of that activity that's wonderful Uh, absolutely absolutely and uh i think more and more so uh we'll see a lot more activity in that beekeeping realm um and because of unfortunately some of the bees that have been you know decimated in some different areas that uh this is not only something that say even in our communities in western countries or wherever but in more of the developing space or the global south communities for a way to drive more of an economic uh uh, impact in that area and uh, give them something for their livelihood you know, something to do for a career. So, uh, yeah, and, and then for definitely for the women, um, gender equality, you know, and we know that that's, you know, very much up there in, in a lot of the UN goals and that kind of yeah. thing for women and girls. So it's it's really neat that they've been, that's one uh, of their goals. That's fantastic, yeah. And I should mention beekeeping and organic farming does not look easy. These... <laughs> They are dedicated. They work really hard, really long days, you know, like checking all the hives, taking out the mites, you know, protecting against predators, even though we're talking about uh, being taken on by women who didn't have formal training. I, I think the image of beekeeping, especially now, a lot of people have like these back backyard beehives that they're selling commercially, right? (laughs) So the image is becoming like, oh, beekeeping's easy, but I don't think so. I think even if you have one of those backyard beehives, you still have to be out there every day. Oh, yes. And taking care of them. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's very worthwhile, but it is hard work. Yes. Not an easy easy thing. For sure. (laughs) Uh, So speaking of volunteering, I just interviewed a social entrepreneur in Tokyo the other day, and she was working really closely with an organization that works with orphans in Japan, orphans or kids who go through trauma and getting them out into the outdoors and just doing simple outdoor activities like hiking and stuff. And it's it's a really great uh, organization, and they do uh, ask for volunteers quite a lot. So that might be something that Um, I can start getting information to your network, the traveling volunteer and people coming to Tokyo or even people who are willing to help out with promotion and stuff online. They said, no matter where you are, that would really help them. So, yeah, and I I like that you're saying that because, um, you know, one of the facets of the, the traveling volunteer to uh, explore at some point. I mean, we're trying to grow our team because we can't do everything right now with who we have. But one of them is this whole area of online volunteering and what does that mean? And uh, so that's kind of percolating. Uh, but definitely people can volunteer from their own home, but it's making an international difference or even a national difference. So, you know, definitely. there's a lot to do with national volunteering that is yeah. not talked about enough. Exactly. Uh, and, and, for, and you can still virtually travel, right? You can exactly. still work with these international organizations and really help them mm-hmm. um, and learn a lot about another culture, another place without physically having to go there. right? Exactly. And a lot of people don't have the time and resources to do so or maybe the physical capability. So this does really fit nicely for some who just really can't go. 
and they do want to make more of a, a global presence difference, then um, volunteering locally is great, but they might not even be able to do that either due to yeah. their capabilities. So, yeah. 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 So that that was something I'd never thought about, but I thought, wow, that fits really perfectly with not only traveling volunteers, of course, people who are coming to Japan can do that, but virtually volunteering while wow, that opens up to quite a lot more people, right? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So I hope when I um, make more contacts with people who have that kind of capability in Japan or elsewhere, that that can be added to our network and then offer more diverse opportunities for people who are following the traveling volunteer oh for sure and you know uh it, it's there's there's all sorts of different types of opportunities i mean i'm a big supporter of skills the skills needed for projects that people have that should have the skilled person come in but yet at the same time there are the one-offs i call it the very short-term volunteering opportunities that pretty much anybody can do and, um, you know, so there's so many ways to get involved, especially in these days with like even us, you know, we're talking across the, the globe right now. I'm in Technology. Phoenix, Arizona, and you're Amazing. In, uh, in, yeah. you know, in Japan. So it's my Japan. Cool. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Do you, do you want to talk a little bit about your latest campaign to get people to use the hashtag? Oh, I can. You want that now or you wanted to Go do ahead. that a little later? Okay. Go ahead. A All short right. one. All right. Well, the um, essentially this hashtag I am this community um, uh, campaign uh, kind of birthed within me in this idea that once people actually travel and they're in another community, essentially you you connect at a different level that you become almost part of that community, that memory, that connectivity, that activity, you've invested in that space and those people. So you go home and you're still very much connected. Also on the other side, when you have people come in and you are hosting volunteers, they're coming in with their, you know, culture, their experiences, their way of connecting with you and helping you alongside with whatever project you have. So that, you know, you know where you live, you are part of that community, but then you become connected to another one that when they've come to your space. So this I am this community is really the connection or intersection between two types, even more types of community members. Um, and then it can just grow from there because you have, you then have locals, you have uh, nonprofit representatives, you have people internationally, maybe nationally, maybe even just who live in that same community uh, within a few minutes away, all kind of intermingling together. And then this becomes a really unique experience, but you are part of this, this new community uh, that you had just through this event. And, um, uh, a lot of things that we're throwing around right now, we'll have more updates on that. So people who are interested on, and, and they are on social media. So we said the Facebook pages, but we're on Twitter. We're also on Instagram and uh, Pinterest. It's not as uh, activated right now, but we do have a site there. And I personally am on LinkedIn and, uh, you know, and our website is still developing, but there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different updates that they're going to have we're going to have available for people who are interested about this whole kind of movement. That's great. Um, yeah. So this, that's kind of where it started. Just sort of this idea of community, how important that is to yep. connect, to share. But yep. the, the real heart of it is, is the community members showcasing not only where they live, but also volunteer opportunities from the community led project is the most important for me. Um, right. People can come in from other countries and start a project there and then pass it along, hopefully. <laughs> uh, there's some don't. They just keep doing this forever and ever, uh, which is not sustainable. But the best community project, I believe, is community-led and initiated. And that's right. really what I am all about. Yeah, great. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lana. I think well, we'll, we'll, we'll end the recording there. And okay. uh, catch up, catch up with, again with you um, for YouTube in about a month. And I'm sure you'll have new things to talk about, new targets and new stories. 
<laughs> yes, there's always something going on. And again, um, maybe we'll be able to just insert somewhere the, the links to the different social media uh, pages and our, or spaces and then the website. And then you can follow us and, and see what's going on in the inter. Yeah, definitely. I'll add the useful links below of the the video and uh, we'll try to do this regularly to keep on top of all the exciting changes happening. Well, th and I thank you so much for, you know, allowing me to chat yet once again of and uh, we'll continue the conversation. Yeah. Let's all right. Do it. Thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.